it wouldn't be MLS Cup unless Seattle came calling. And Schmetzer and co were at it again. The defending champions came back to break Minnesota's hearts and were in search of more silverware. In waiting were Columbus, past winners themselves, imperious at home, and fronted by figures with experience of what it takes. Oh, it's in the back of the net from Giazzi Zardas. Could the crew claim the cup, or would it be heading back with the usual suspects? With the Columbus crew set to move home next year, Mafray Stadium made its post-season farewell, hosting the 25th edition of Major League Soccer's showpiece. For the 2019 champions, the Seattle Sounders, the goal was a third title in five years, while the home side were hunting their second MLS Cup. We have to give it all we have, but at the same time, um, we can't let, you know, emotion drive uh, this game, we have to have the right balance and we have to do what we do best. We have to make sure we play our game, our style, and we don't get carried away and, and, uh, into the way Seattle likes to play. Our style of play is not going to alter dramatically for this contest. We always, always try and impose our will on our opponents. Sometimes we make slight adjustments because they have a talented player but we're not going to change who we are. You compare us to them on paper, you know, they're, they're uh, for sure the favorites. But, um, you know, games aren't played on paper, fortunately. So it's going to be a really exciting game. I told the guys I, I wouldn't want it any different. If we're going to win a championship on our home field, I want to do it against the best team. And um, certainly the Seattle Sounders are, are the best team, hopefully, next to us. Caleb's a very competitive, good coach. He's done a great job getting Columbus to host MLS Cup. So I feel exactly the same way. He has done a lot of work in a short amount of time and it's gonna be a good, entertaining final. Commentary comes from David Pratton and Phil Blacker. Well, let's have a look at the lineups for MLS Cup 2023. Changes for the crew from the Eastern Conference final win over the Revs. First choice goalkeeper Elo Rome returns in place of Andrew Tarbell. But in a big blow for Columbus, they are without two time MLS Cup winner Darlington Nagby and designated player Pedro Santos, both ruled out just two days ago after positive COVID 19 tests. In come 19 year old Aidan Morris as the youngest starter in MLS Cup history and Derek Etienne Jr. The selection is much more straightforward for Seattle, who complete the playoffs without a single change to their starting lineup. This is the same 11 for a fourth match in a row, with Gustav Svensson score at the winning goal as a sub against Minnesota on Monday. Again left on the bench, along with Will Bruin, who also came on to score against the Loons. Six of this side started last season's MLS Cup win against Toronto. Jim Arufo there has the honour of officiating as tonight's referee is third MLS Cup, his first actually since Columbus last staged it back in 2015. It all comes down to this kickoff in Columbus with MLS Cup at stake. Can the crew claim the honours or will the Sounders reign supreme once again? Touch in there for Aidan Morris in the midfield, a huge occasion for him, deputising for Dunnington Nagby. Zellerayan blocked away off Shane O'Neill for the corner kick. Zellerayan's very much at the hub of everything creative going forward for the crew. Just in that little pocket of space which pulls out the Sounders' centre halves. The feeling that perhaps. It's a question for Roldan and João Paulo to answer, isn't it? Those deep-line midfielders. Too much space between them and the back four at this moment. The Argentinian Zellerayan has gone across to take this corner kick. He's got plenty to aim for in the penalty area. 
There is the chance for Zardis, smartly onto it, kept out by Stefan Fry, it's a big save. And there is still the danger, maybe Morris trying to return it. Williams going up for it, acrobatically. Unfortunately, unable to profit. The Sounders, when they needed him, were able to turn to Stefan Fry to keep them on terms. Pure instinct, pure reaction from Stefan Fry. It's real energy and enthusiasm to the way the crew are attacking the Sounders' goal at this moment in time. But Stefan Fry was up to the task. The right place to keep out Zardis. And now Jordan Morris at the other end for Seattle with a warning shot. More than that in the end, Aloy Roy wasn't required, but Columbus will have trouble if uh, Morris is in possession in that part of the pitch. And stopping him will be a big part of Caleb Porter's plans. And Sissi wouldn't do too much differently, though, despite the loss of Nagby and Pedro Santos. They have a way of working. It's business as usual, preparing for the fixture, despite it being one of this magnitude. Goes from uh, Harrison Arthur, Zalaray on! And it's in! Stefan Frey got behind it but couldn't keep it out. And Columbus make it count. They lead in MLS Cup. And it's one of their star men who has scored it, found himself in the right place to profit. But Stefan Frey, having made that big save earlier, beaten by that one, just couldn't do enough. Should Stefan Fry do better? Possibly. We know what a fantastic goalkeeper he is. Zellerayan makes such a great contact. Ends up coming off the arm and then the thigh of the Sounders goalkeeper. Plenty of Sounders players looking around wondering how on earth Zellerayan gets that much time and space at the back post. He knows just how big a goal that could possibly be for the crew. The Sounders will have to come from behind. Here's Aidan Morris, just taken off him by Ladera, but Morris has done well to win it back. Harrison Affle. Played only as far as Celerayan. Kept his composure, finds Derek Etienne Jr. who finds the corner for the crew and doubles their lead half an hour in. Some story here developing as they look to try and seize the trophy from Seattle. They've certainly seized the initiative. Well, the first goal had a perhaps a slice of luck with it. This one, it's a joy to behold. There may only be 1,500 fans in this stadium, but my word, they're making a hell of a noise, and quite rightly so. Eric Etienne Jr. sending them into rapture with the second goal going in. Zellerey am once again at the real heart of it. Shows the ability, the awareness, the understanding of what his teammate needs, how he wants the ball laid at his feet. After that, though, I just gorgeously caressed into the bottom corner. Stefan Fry could have done better with the first. He's got absolutely no chance with the second. They're in dreamland right now, aren't they? Beautifully taken goal from Derek Etienne. Coaches who have different approaches in terms of their mannerisms, maybe certainly on the sidelines. Smetchel watches on, he's a deep thinker of the game. Taylor Porter, much more intense, really, as a character. Each have had wonderful results with these squads, not just this season, but with a more prolonged period of their coaching careers. Luis Diaz has done really well here. Did have support arriving as well. Etienne trying to win the ball back has conceded the free kick in the process. Gemma Rufo perfectly placed there to call that one. The great thing about Brian Schmetzer is as well, you've got someone who fundamentally doesn't panic, does he, in these situations. Given what we've seen leading up to the appearance here in the final, they need not panic, but maybe this is something to really get worried about. Aidan Morris finding Diaz, it wasn't far away from three. Luis Diaz across the face of goal. But the crew look a real threat every time they foray forward. Just pulling the Sounders apart. Morris at the very hub of everything positive in the centre of the pitch for the crew. 
There's a real fearlessness to his play in this game so far. And Jesse Sardes throw himself at it. Possibly not, maybe I'm being a tad harsh there, but undoubtedly that man Morris really is driving them forward. The cross cut out by Jonathan Mensa. Paolo beaten by the bounce of the ball. Zardes was able to get a foot in, and this is Derek Etienne Jr. Tello Royale, the two goal scorers attempting to combine, and there will be a free kick at the end of that. Neymar protesting his innocence. There's a real frustration surrounding this Sounders side right now. He's not happy yet, Marizzi, with the way that Zellerayan went down. There's an arm in the face, clumsy more than anything. Well, he is one of the new arrivals from the title-winning team last season. The Colombian centre-back has had an impressive campaign at the heart of that defence, but he's the one that's conceded the free kick here. Zalarayan take it and dink it in dangerously. Only cleared as far as Aidan Morris. And after the first half that he's had so far, he, he saw the glory. I can understand why he fancied himself. Sat up very nicely, beats it enough first touch, just sailed harmlessly over the bar. Eric Etienne Jr. attempting to go all the way through at the end of a first half in which he has had a significant say, in which has all gone the way of the Columbus crew. Lucas Zellerayan scoring one and making one. To put the crew very much on the course for glory here. Not quite in cruise control, but very much in charge. And Seattle with a big task to turn it around. They were two behind in the Western Conference final and salvaged it. An even tougher task on their hands on the evidence of the first 45 minutes in Ohio. We're at halftime at Marfrey Stadium in MLS Cup. It is the Columbus Crew 2, the Seattle Sounders nil. Never write off this Seattle team. A winning culture that has been developed in their 12 seasons in Major League Soccer. They've qualified for these playoffs in all of them. They're contesting a fourth final in five years. But they have it all on here. David Prutton, if they are to get themselves back in this game, you don't often see that from the restart. Well, no, just utterly ridiculous. Um, I don't know whether that's Rui Diaz being frustrated with what's gone on in the first half, but they've got so much work to do. But they need to make sure that they keep hold of the football, be responsible in possession. Very odd way to start. Much behind for the corner. All the early questions being asked by Seattle at the start of this second period, understandably. What can uh, Ladero do from this corner kick? Looking to maintain this run of assisting in seven straight playoff games. It wasn't far away from eight. As Christian Roldan rose to meet it. Feels like there's an urgency. There's a sense of getting closer, isn't there, in the second half of the Sounders. Zellerayan slipping it into space for Milton Valenzuela over the head of Sardis. Diaz, though, unmarked beyond him. And wide it goes. It was a real chance. Agonizingly zipping past Jazzy Zardes. Seen too much of the home side going forward in the second half. That was a rare sight of goal, wasn't it? They might expect there will be more as this goes on. Seattle having to take the sort of chances that we've seen. Zellerayan has got room in which to work again. Referee allowing the advantage. Sardis having gone down. Let's have options either side. Etienne's effort blocked away back as far as Zellerayan again. Now Valenzuela, Derek Etienne Jr., Milton Valenzuela picking his way through, going for glory when he didn't quite have the angle from there. So tight, wasn't it? Jesse Zarda is the man inside the six-yard box. He has also, if he tracks the back pose, can he screen for the ball to be crossed along? We're certainly enjoying every single moment out there so far. Plenty to sing about, plenty to chant about. All back into the heart of that penalty area. Williams away. 
O'Neill. Morris pulls it back. Ladero! A whisker away. It's as close, really, as the Sounders have come today. It was almost slow motion, wasn't it? Was he just passed it towards the bottom corner? Time seemed to stand still as everybody on the pitch looked around, wondering whether it was going to nestle inside the crew goal. Really well kept alive by the away side. Something we're not seeing too much of them from corners during the course of the game. Just ends up at the feet of the little magician. This is Yamar. Flick on is by Jordan Morris. Guided back by Mensa, had such a wonderful season. Made the MLS best 11 for his uh, performances at the back. Not too many arguing with that inclusion. I read that well to get to it just ahead of Jesse Zardes. Morris will get his head to it. This is uh, Rui Diaz trying to link with Will Bruin. Important foot in by Josh Williams. Everyone's at full stretch between Mensa and Williams. They've been kept very busy in this second half. Mensa for once finds himself out of position with the ball just nestling behind him at the feet of Rui Diaz. In comes the corner again. Ladero, it's met by Svensson, and it's wide by Svensson. And against Minnesota on Monday, that went in. Stern test, really stern test for the Columbus crew. It's a tricky 10 minutes or so they've got to navigate here. Undoubtedly, we've seen a better Sounders side in the second half. The intensity's been there, the commitment to attacking balls into the box, also on show. Just not enough at the moment. Smith forward. Bruin had dropped into that pocket of space. This is Jimmy Madranda. Seems to have taken up that more advanced role on the left. Only joined in October from Nashville. With Handwana Buana moving in the other direction. He was an MLS Cup winner with Sporting Kansas City in his first season in this league, actually, in 2013, but only made one appearance off the bench. Well, his appearance off the bench tonight spark a dramatic turnaround in fortunes for the Sounders been able to generate that same sort of momentum as against Minnesota. There will be a free kick for them here, though, eventually. It's a cheap one, isn't it? Zellerian giving it away on roll down. Just a late, late attempt to play in the man and the ball. Gives the Sounders an opportunity to get the ball into the box. Darrow delivers dangerously. So close, still the threat. Eloy Rome, I think, got his hand to that, didn't he, rather than the frame of the goal. Jordan Morris, who'd met it, must have thought he'd scored. This is Luis Diaz, shoulder to shoulder with Brad Smith, and he's away from him here, with support in the middle as well. Tees up Zellerayan! And there! surely do it an emphatic finish and the Columbus crew are closing in on claiming the cup they are ripping off those rave green ribbons they're claiming the cup for themselves for the first time in a dozen years 3-0 Columbus well if it's the goal that seals it my word it is very much deserving of the accolade Zellerayan, yes, he was more involved in the first half, but second half, if this is the goal that seals it for the crew, then stand up and take the plaudits. He really has been the creative force. What a way to surely seal it. Seattle's grip on the trophy is all but over. It really has been a game where the crew have put the Sounders to the sword. Opening 45 minutes, they were irresistible. Jesse Zardes wants to have his say as well! And was only a fraction away from the top scorer getting in on the act. This is what Caleb Porter wants. He wants the noise, he wants the thunder, he wants the emotion. 
It is the Columbus crew that conquer and that win MLS Cup for only the second time in their history. They have overcome adversity better than anybody else this season. And they are the champions. They hit the heights in Ohio. Lucas Elorayan, the match winner. Two goals and an assist. Not only do they still have a club in Columbus, they have the champion club in Columbus. They snatched the trophy away from Seattle, the side that had set the standards, whose title defence ends here in emphatic fashion. You can see just how much it means, how hard they've worked, how much they've sacrificed. Now they reap their rewards. The Columbus crew are crowned in MLS Cup, kings of the competition in 2020. Scenes to savour at Marfre Stadium in the final post-season fixture at this famous arena. So many tests to overcome on the way, but they have the Philip F. Anschutz Trophy. It was a brand new trophy when they first lifted it in 2008. They've had to wait until now to get their hands on it again. They've snatched it from Seattle, the defending champions. And how they have earned these scenes of celebration. I actually believe that you grow more than ever in adversity. I've grown more than ever this year. My team and my players have grown more than ever. And so when we have adversity like this week, we use it the right way, we handle it the right way. I absolutely think that this game was a failure. I think this individual game was not a good performance by our club, not up to the standard that, that we set for ourselves, that I set for myself. You know, I, I do this for the players. I do this for the moments like today. I do it for the guys in that locker room. I love every one of them. Um, that's, that's what life's about. That's why I coach. Um, I don't, I don't. <laughs> I think there was a little bit of extra motivation to do this for Darlington Nagby and Pedro Santos. Those two guys, they were a key to us getting here and, and without them, um, it was a tall order, but I think we used that to galvanize the group even more and give us even a little bit more hunger than we had already, which was a lot. Congratulations then to the Columbus crew, whose dominant display earned them a second MLS Cup. A triumph for Caleb Porter and his team, as one of the true originals of the league came out on top. As one observer put it, the day that the founders beat the Sounders. Columbus, champions in this unique and landmark year in MLS. 25 and counting. Old faces, new names. But liftoff didn't last long. Cities across the globe ground to a halt. But in sport, we can find solace, and the show found a way to go on. A tournament like never seen before. Soccer was back, and with it, a message of what really matters. A challenging month ended in triumph for the Timbers. The regular season return saw a housewarming party, but only for the select few. There were goals that deserved an audience. Some own the stage that others have so often called their own. Amongst the noise and confusion, a clamor for change, but the future is for those who know how to wait. The playoffs had an expansion of sorts. Boys in gold glistened and then took the crown jewels to end the reign of a king. 
the revolution had truly begun. There were tales of the implausible, where fact and fiction almost collided. Unbelievable stuff here! A fairy tale that finally finished as the playoffs looked in cruise control, while the Sounders thrived on the chaos. But in a season where it was sometimes difficult to see an end, this was always Columbus's 2020 vision. This copyrighted broadcast of Major League Soccer may not be retransmitted, reproduced, or rebroadcast without the express written consent of Major League Soccer.